Over the course of this series, we're going to discuss many former Brazilian IndyCar drivers, just because there's so many of them. Previously in this series, we've looked at Matthias Lace, who showed promise and talent early on and was tapped to be a future star, until he was given terrible equipment and eventually faded into obscurity. In this episode of All IndyCar, we talk about Mario Haberfield, someone who never found his footing in motorsports. Welcome back to All IndyCar, the motorsports history show looking at the most interesting stories in American open wheel racing. Mario Haberfield was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil on January 25th, 1976. Mario wanted to be a tennis player at first, but this changed when he was inspired by Nelson Piquet, a close friend of the family, to start his karting career. By 1992, Haberfield was a Pan American karting champion, and by the next year, he was the Sao Paulo champion. In 1994, he made a few starts in Brazilian Formula Fords, then moved to Cambridge in England to compete in British Formula Fords in 1995. He finished fourth in the 1990 95 British Formula Ford standings with three wins on the season. He then competed in Formula Renaults in 1996, where he'd grab a win and three podiums on his way to fifth in the championship. For the next two years, he raced in British Formula 3s, where he did pretty well. 1997 would see Mario complete this season with Manor Motorsports, where he'd win two races on the season on his way to fifth in the championship. He also competed in the Macau Grand Prix this year, which had a pretty stacked field. This included future F1 race winner Mark Webber, future IndyCar race race winner Oriol Servia, future F1 driver Stefan Sarazen, future Top Gear Stig Ben Collins, future touring car legend Tom Cornell, future Mercedes test pilot Peter Dumbreck, and future F1 driver Ralph Furman. Unfortunately, Mario would retire from this race in 19th, which was disappointing, but the next year in British Formula 3s would be anything but. In the 1998 British F3 series, Mario Haberfield would race with Paul Stewart Racing. Paul Stewart was the son of three-time F1 champion Jackie. Paul was also the co-owner of Stewart Grand Prix in F1. This was Mario's great shot to get his phone in the door of F1 teams, and he impressed. Mario won 6 of the 16 races that season and got a total of 11 podiums. He won the championship by an outstanding 55 points. You would think that after a dominant performance like this, Stewart Grand Prix would snap him up to drive for the team in F1 or bankroll an F3000 ride. This didn't happen, actually, as McLaren ended up snapping up Mario for 1999. He'd race for West Com competition in F3000, and to say this stint was disappointing would be a massive understatement. While his teammate Nick Heidfeld won four races and the championship that year, Mario failed to qualify five times, retired from three races, and had a best finish of 14th. After the embarrassment of this year, Haberfield lost his role as McLaren Test and Reserve driver, and his big chance was over. Another three disappointing seasons would follow in F3000. His best finish in the series would be second place in Aero Lagos in 2002. Four teams, four years, and a best points finish for him being seventh. After 2002, Mario Haberfield's F1 journey came to a crushing end. He needed to move on to a new home in racing, and he found it in IndyCar. In 2003, Mario Haberfield would race for My Jack Conquest Racing in the kart series. His IndyCar career got off to a solid start with a fourth place finish at St. Pete. Unfortunately, this was followed up with a crash at Monterey, but after this, there weren't many low points. Besides a poor finish at the Lassitz Ring and a crash early into Toronto, the rest of 2003 would be an amazing rookie season. 11 top 10s, 3 top 5s, and a best finish at 4th at St. Pete would see Mario finish 12th in the points that year. After this season though, Kart filed for bankruptcy, and the already fairly low level of competition sunk even more. Paid drivers had been absorbed into the series, and with this, Mario Haberfield was left without a ride. He joined Walker Motorsports, where results were still good and he was actually showing improvement. For some reason though, Walker Motorsports and Mario Haberfield split before the season ended, leaving Mario out of IndyCar for good. Since his IndyCar departure, Mario has competed in Grand Am where results weren't really there, and he had a one-off weekend in the 2019 Jaguar I-Pace e-Trophy series where he finished 8th and 7th in both races. Mario Haberfield is someone that not too many people have ever heard of. Most of the success he had in motorsport were in series where results are only available on websites that haven't been updated since I was born. It's also disappointing how his career did a complete 180 after 1999. He just never regained the confidence he lost that year, and it's sad to me. It also doesn't help when the series that you're trying to revive your career in files for bankruptcy after your first season. In the world of IndyCar, we never got the chance to see the full potential of Mario Haberfield, but hopefully with this video, I've shown you what could have been for this man's career. 